John Seaton, who's a former political operative for Lindsey Graham, who was on this show yesterday, also for John McCain, George W. Bush, and their presidential campaigns. And David Nyack joins us as well, president and executive director of the Center for American Progress Action Fund. Welcome, uh, John and Naveen. And you know, let me just try to throw this all together with what Kelly's reporting from Iowa and what happened to Kelly's point in New Hampshire last night, where we now have governors, for what it's worth, in Iowa and New Hampshire, both endorsing non-Trump candidates in this uh, GOP primary race. So, you know, the Iowa governor going for DeSantis, New Hampshire for, for Haley. John, your, your thoughts on that and what, if anything, it says about the race and where things are at? Well, the guy that came as a huge surprise, uh, Governor uh, Reynolds obviously served as his fellow governor with, mm -hmm. with Ron DeSantis. They got to know each other. They had a relationship through the Republican Governors Association. So I don't think that was a huge surprise. And nor was it a big surprise. Uh, governor Sununu has been pretty clear that he was going to support someone other than the former president in the New Hampshire primary. So not a huge shock in either of those. It obviously remains to be seen how much impact those yeah. endorsements will have. And, and, and what we're seeing certainly so far, at least in Iowa, is that right now, uh, former President Trump remains a very, very strong front runner. He does. He's still, uh, by every measure that we have to measure things, uh, the front runner in all this. The last time we spoke on this program, at least, Naveen, to Governor Sununu, which was obviously before the endorsement, he was making this case that he thinks there's this short window, probably after New Hampshire, depending on how things go, where somebody, I'm sure now we know, he, he thinks that somebody's going to be Nikki Haley, would have a chance to go after Trump and really have a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You know, it's a short window before Super Tuesday, but make it a make it a game, so to speak. You you buy into that at all, Naveen? I, I don't really. I mean, there's nothing in the data that suggests that, um, you know, and again, we're do, we're seeing the Republican establishment really make the same mistake they made in 2016, which is uh, waiting until the last minute to try to hope that coalesce against an alternative. And at that point, Trump had so much momentum. And the one other thing I'd add, which I don't think we should miss here, is that it actually is a really big deal that you have two sitting governors not endorsing their former presidential right. nominee, former, you know, the president. That is a big deal. And it, it underscores actually something that, you know, Vivek Ramaswamy has said, which is under Trump, the Republican Party has been a party of losers for, you know, multiple cycles now. And I think Governor Sununu and Governor Reynolds see that. But there's too few elected leaders that are actually coming out and, and saying anything, right. and I think it'll be too late. Of course, the Trump folks will just say that's just another sign of the establishment, you know, not being for, uh, for him and all that. So, yeah, it'll, we'll see if it has any impact. So a couple other topics here the panel I want to mention and cover with you guys. I think one is abortion, because that's been a big political issue, of course, especially in recent election cycles. But then we had news today uh, from the, su the Supreme Court saying it would decide uh, a challenge to federal regulations relaxing restrictions on this abortion pill. So we have that on top of the Texas story that we've all been following very closely, this woman in Texas this week, that keep kind of abortion politics in the news. We know it's going to be still a story, John, in the next cycle for Republicans. Does it continue to be one that hurts them at the, um, at the ballot box? Well, I think Republicans have to get in front of this issue. Um, and I think that Republicans need to place themselves where the American people are. Most uh, American voters, most uh, of, of both parties, frankly, believe in reasonable regulations on abortion, right. reasonable restrictions. Um, the 15-week the, the uh, uh, limitation is something that I think the majority of voters would agree with. And I think that that's a place where if Republicans can coalesce around a position like that one, they can kind of get in front of it. What we're seeing is more of a reactive standpoint mm -hmm. where they're constantly beating back attacks from the left. And that makes it very, very challenging. So um, I'm hopeful and we'll, we'll see how things play out. But I think that you're going to see more and more Republicans trying to get out in front of the issue and, and present themselves as kind of the consensus builders when it comes to this very, very uh, divisive issue. In of American all politics. people, I think Ann Coulter, of all people, uh, uh, agrees with that representation or the way you put it. There was a tweet. We'll put it up on the screen from um, Ann Coulter. It's about, you know, past at least as right wing as you can get. Pro-lifers used to be so good at picking popular issues to nudge people to our side parental notification, spousal notification, baby born alive, partial birth abortion. And then she goes on to say this Texas woman is not that case. Um, so, you know, it seems to Naveen like a lot of conservatives or Republicans realize it's an issue for them in the way they're handling this, this issue. But, it, um, you know, it's still out there and it's still something that they've been, you know, again, suffering from politically. How do you think it all plays out next year? First of all, I just want to be really clear, which is this isn't a passive thing that's happening to them. They right. created this reality. This We are seeing these cases happening because of 
what Republicans have done, what the sort of extreme Supreme Court has done, what, you know, another one I'd add to the mix this week, Connell, is Missouri introducing legislation to criminalize women for having an abortion. So they are creating these policies and women across the country are having to live with the horrific consequences of it. So it is going to continue to be an issue for them. And I, I, it is rightly an issue for them because people are suffering as a result. And I don't think it's as simple as pretending that a 15-week national ban mm -hmm. is going to be where the majority of Americans are. We've seen ballot initiative after ballot initiative, including in red states, where they have rejected the notion of any limit on the uh, sort of a, a straight across right. the board ban on abortion. That right. is where the American people are. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.